I remember I was talking to you about Columbus and how Columbus was arguing the Earth was much smaller. He thought it was about half the size than it actually is. They knew about the, the uh, values that Eratosthenes came up with. They knew how big he calculated. The problem was, by the 15, 1600, 1492, or whenever Columbus wanted to sail, they <clears throat> didn't know how big a stadium was. So it depends on what you calculate a stadium is. Well, for the Greeks, a stadium was, remember the Greeks, the original Greeks, 300 BC, they were the first ones that had the Olympic Games. They had stadiums, and they would run races around the stadiums. The problem was is that every different city, Alexandria, Cairo, all these cities, had their own stadiums. And all the stadiums were different sizes. So it depended on which stadium you pit, whether this was close to being right or not. The reality is, is if we pick the stadia in Alexandria, which they have found through archeological um, work, and they measure that, Eratosthenes was very close to being right for the size of the Earth. But if you pick one that was about half the size, which is what Columbus was doing, then you got the wrong size of the Earth, so you got the Earth significantly smaller than it would have been. But what Eratosthenes was known for was for determining the size of the Earth. And that's the method he used to determine the size of the Earth. Now we have a wood cutting of Eratosthenes, which is interesting. Because most of the Greeks, we don't have any pictures of them at all. But this is what Eratosthenes looked like. He looks kind of like a librarian. Very big brain, very studious guy. So, Eratosthenes ended up being famous even though they made fun of him as a librarian. Alright, the next astronomer we're going to talk about, or next person that had to do with astronomy, is actually the first true astronomer. All these other ones were just geometry or Aristotle did everything, and they had a, I'm going to turn that back off again, had a little bit to do with astronomy. Where well, this guy was actually an astronomer. His name is Hipparchus. And Hipparchus lived from 160 to 127 BC, which was a shame because he was really good at what he did, but he died when he was 33 years old. He was very young when he died. So he, uh, yeah, we don't know what he would have accomplished if he would have lived a little longer, another 20 years or so. But he was the first true astronomer. He spent all his whole time studying astronomy. These are some of his accomplishments. We're going to laugh now. He measured the position of 850 stars. So he created a coordinate system and figured out how to measure their position on the celestial sphere. He realized that their position changed over time. All the stars did, which means that our reference point, which was the North Celestial Pole, was changing over time. Essentially, he determined the Earth's axis was processing. And he calculated how long it would take for that to occur. He said it would be around 26,000 years, which is what it is, 25,000 something. So he was very close to being right on on that. Number three, he found the distance to the moon to be 59 times the Earth's radius.
here's the Earth. And remember we talked about this as the Earth spins around. This would be noon. The first quarter moon would be rising. But if you look at where the moon is, with respect to the stars, it looks like it's over here. So there's stars back here. But 12 hours later, the Earth is rotated around, and now you're over here, and it'd be midnight, and the moon is setting, but now the moon appears to be over here. So what he really did was figured out, didn't draw that very well, the parallax of the moon. Remember what parallax meant was that the observer's position changes, which makes things seem to appear to move. And that's what happens with the moon. And he realized that this is the Earth's um, radius right here. So this is the Earth's radius. He again used right triangles, realized if I can measure that angle, which is the angle he measured, he can figure out how many times this is bigger than that. And so he calculated how much further away the Earth is. And 59 times is actually very close. Uh, we usually say nowadays it's about 30 times the Earth's diameter, which is, would be 60 times the Earth's radius. So he came up very close. Um, he also calculated the length of the year to within six minutes. Why was this important? But remember when we were talking about calendars, when they added the months of July and August, when they created the Julian calendar, they added leap years at that time as well. They had to know the length of the year to figure that out. They used Hipparchus' data. This was as accurate as you had at the time. And so they used his data to determine the calendar system. That's when they created the Julian calendar. All right, and the fifth thing he did he found that the Earth was closest to the Sun in December. Late December. Now it's actually closer to early January because it, it migrates slightly, our, our orbit switches. But how did he do that? Well, he actually just measured the size of the sun. How do you measure the size of the sun? Well, he had uh, quartz. They didn't really have glass like we have now. But they had quartz, which was these thin sheets of crystal that you could see through. And if you'd hold them up in a fire, then the smoke and soot would get on there. It would act like a filter so you could look at the sun. And then he would put it in a rigging so that he was the exact same distance. And he would mark how big it is. And he just did that for a whole year. And he would see when the sun was the biggest, which means what was the closest. And that's how he got that the sun was closest in December. Um, so those were the things that Hipparchus did in his 33 years. Now, the question is, what could he have done if he had been alive longer? We're not sure, but he did do a lot of astronomy in that time. And he set it up for the next guy, which is the one that was very important for astronomy. And that'll be on the next video.